Hello, everyone, and welcome to our first session of the Outdoor Tourism Content Create Training. Um, I'm really happy that so many of you found the way here. I'm, I'm really excited. We have uh, over 100 participants. That's, that's really amazing. And um, I hope that you had no problems joining this call for your phone, for your computer, or any other device. Yes, so this is the start of the Outdoor Tourism Content Creator Training, and I would like to introduce myself real quickly and tell you a little bit about the background of why we are doing this. So my name is Simon Reuter. I am a Research Partnership Manager for Outdoor Active, one of the world's biggest outdoor tourism platforms. Um, and I'm the head of a project called the Open Tourism Data Initiative. It's a project that we are implementing together with GIZ in the Western Balkans, mainly in Albania, Kosovo, Montenegro and North Macedonia. But um, we have recently extended our activities to all of the Western Balkans. Um, so that's the background of, 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 of why we're here. And the reason we're doing this project or the main aim of this project is that we want to increase the visibility of the Western Balkans as an outdoor tourism destination. Because as many of you probably know, or all of you, since you probably all somehow come from a tourism background or have something to do with tourism, um, the Western Balkans are probably one of the most amazing destinations for adventure tourism, whether it's hiking, mountain climbing, river rafting, cycling. It's a beautiful region with amazing landscapes. But if you look at the international travel market in the adventure and outdoor tourism travel segment, you will see that other destinations get a lot more of the spotlight. If you think of Switzerland, Austria, France, Italy, but also Iceland, New Zealand, uh, the United States of America, Canada, those are destinations that are a lot more famous than, let's say, Albania, Kosovo, Bosnia or Serbia. And that's a pity because outdoor tourism has a great potential for uh, creating jobs, for um, creating an income, especially in rural areas. It's a great way um, to bring people to the country, to attract more tourists, to make a living. Um, to build new businesses, all of this can be done through adventure tourism. Now, there's a situation, there's a problem that we need to change. We need to make sure that every traveler in the world who wants to experience hiking, who wants to experience mountains, who wants to experience pristine nature, who wants to have an adventure in a unique landscape, that all of them at least know that the Western Balkans exist and that they are a place that they can and should travel to. And one of the ways we've been approaching this is that we've decided to work directly with those that make tourism. People like you, people who either own a tourism business, who maybe are a tour guide, who own an accommodation like a guest house or a hotel, um, people who rent out outdoor tourism gear, bicycles, rafts, boats and so on. People who maybe work in marketing um, for, for tourism, for outdoor and adventure tourism, people who work in destination development and regional development, or maybe you're just a student um, and you, you plan on working in this field or you want to support businesses in outdoor tourism in the future. Um, for all of you, um, it, can, it can help to, um, to know more about how you can use the internet, how you can use online platforms and how you can use content to promote these destinations, to promote your businesses, to promote your services and your offers. This is why we're here and this is why we're starting this course. Um, so I would like to give you a quick introduction to what is waiting for you tonight and over the next six weeks um, in, 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 in our weekly courses. I'm just going to share my screen real quick. Brilliant, yes. So a little bit more about the purpose of this course. Um, I've told you sort of what the problem is. We, we have a lack of visibility for the Western Balkans as an adventure and outdoor tourism destination. Um, and we have the problem that it's, it's difficult to sort of get these destinations, these places, these tourism businesses on the map and to make sure that people all over the world know these places exist. Um, however, we have found, and we know this because we are an online platform ourselves, that online platforms can make a big difference here. They can be a great tool to promote destinations, to promote tourism businesses, to promote services and offers um, in outdoor and adventure tourism for two main reasons. The first of them is they are free. So you can use them for your purposes, for your marketing and your promotion for free. 
and they give you access to a huge community because they usually have millions of members, millions of users, and those are usually the kind of people that you want to reach with your offers or with your destination because those are the travelers that you want to attract. When we talk about online platforms, what do we mean? We mean all sorts of online platforms, but most specifically those that are connected with tourism. Um, so those can be general tourism platforms such as TripAdvisor or even things like Google, Google Maps. Those are also platforms because people use them to find information, to find details and to plan their trips. Um, but at the same time, there are platforms that really focus on outdoor and adventure tourism, platforms like OutDirective, um, platforms like AllTrails, Wikiloc or Kmood that you can also use and that might be even more effective for outdoor tourism promotion because they allow you to get in touch with the most relevant target group right away because who are the people who use platforms like OutDirective, like Kmood, like uh, AllTrails? They're people who like to be active in nature, who like to travel, to experience nature, to experience the outdoors and to have an adventure. Hikers, mountain climbers, cyclists, people like those. Um, but there's one thing that all of these platforms require in order for you to be able to promote your business through them, and that is good content. Content can be images, it can be videos, it can be texts, descriptions, offers, um, literally anything basically. But in order for you to have a presence on these platforms, you need to be able to create good content. And this is something that nobody really teaches you in school. This is something that is a relatively new skill because these platforms have only been around for so and so many years. Um, and not everybody might be, let's say, a born talented content creator. You know, not every one of us is, an, is a social media influencer and knows how to create amazing imagery um, that convinces people, that inspires people to travel to their destination. But the good news is that everybody can learn to become a skilled content creator because there are a few things, a few ground rules that you can learn. Um, and this is what the purpose of this course is. We want to support you in becoming a skilled, a professional content creator so that you can promote tourism businesses, tourism destinations, tourism services in the adventure and outdoor tourism segment. So here's what you'll learn in this course. We're going to look at the basics of content-based promotion of tourism offers and services. So what really are the foundations? What makes good content good content? What makes bad content bad content? And we're going to look in detail and give you detailed instructions on how you can create good digital content, such as texts, such as images, such as digital offers, and so on. We're going to show you how you can put your business and your destination and your services on the map of online platforms. And we're going to look at different online platforms there, although we're going to be using one as an example for most of the time. And we're going to show you how you can improve your content and you can perfectionize your content in such a way that you get more visibility with it. Most importantly, as I already mentioned, we are going to look at different platforms um, and we're always going to look at how we can use the same content, the same descriptions, the same images and promote them through different platforms such as Google, TripAdvisor, as I already mentioned, OutDirective, but also social media channels like Instagram. Um, so we're going to look at all of them. However, we are going to really focus um, on one as an example so we can practice with one tool, but everything you learn you can also use on the other platforms. These are the six sessions that await you. So we're going to meet every Wednesday for the next six weeks at 6.30 uh, Central European time um, for an online session of one and a half hours. And we're starting this week with our first topic, which is the basics of content-based outdoor tourism promotion. So today I'm going to give you an introduction um, to the topic and we're going to show you how you can get started on platforms, especially on one platform that we're going to be using over the next few weeks. Next week, March 13, we are going to look at how we can get information from the destination, from the physical place, to the digital screen, to the online platform. So we're going to be talking about how we can digitize trails, routes, offers, how we get the kind of information that we need um, to put it on the, the online platform. Session number three on March 20 is going to be very, very interesting, but also going to be a bit more intense. This is where we're going to be focusing on text creation, on text production, which is one of the key elements of content creation. So we're going to look at how we can create captivating text and descriptions, even if English is not your mother language, or maybe you even struggle with the language. We're going to give you some very basic pointers, some very basic instructions, and we're going to show you a lot of different tools that you can use 
to improve your text creation and make sure that you really write some convincing offers and convincing descriptions and you inspire people through your words to travel to your destination, to your business, to book your services. Session number four is going to focus on content ranking because just because you produce content doesn't mean that it's naturally going to rank very high and that everybody is going to see this first before any other content. But there are some things that you can do um, to make your content rank higher um, and, and, and uh, rank better on online platforms. Session number five on April 3 is also going to be very, very interesting to many of you, I'm sure, um, because it focuses on how we can make places and offers seen. And when we talk about seeing things, images, of course, play a big role. So we're actually going to give you a short introduction to photography and how you can create good imagery for your tourism business and your destination, even if you're not a professional photographer and even if you don't have gear that's worth thousands of euros. Just with your phone, with your smartphone, you can actually create good pictures that are at least good enough to promote your destination and your business. And in the final session on April 10, we're going to look how we can make our content work for us across different platforms. So we're going to look at many different platforms and see how we can get your business and your destination on there and how you can use it for maximum visibility and to increase your reach um, and, and yeah, who, who sees what you're offering. A few words about how this course works, um, because we have chosen a very specific format here. Each session, this is the first of six sessions, and each session, which usually take one and a half hours, consists um, of an introduction. This is what's happening right now. We're going to keep this a bit shorter over the next sessions. Um, and then we're always going to show two training modules. And I'm actually not going to present them live, but we have pre-recorded them. Why have we pre-recorded them? Because they're going to include a lot of screen recordings from different online platforms. And to do this live would most certainly go wrong. It would also take a lot longer. Um, so we have pre-recorded them together with an agency in Albania that helps us produce these videos. Um, and uh, we're basically going to watch these training modules live. And then afterwards, we will discuss them. We will have a conversation about them. So if you have questions and so on, um, we can we can talk about them. I mentioned this before. We will be using Outdoor Active platform as an example. For those of you who don't know Outdoor Active yet, no worries. You're going to get an introduction um, in in the next few minutes. Um, the reason why we're using this platform is because we have access to it, <laughs> and because it is one of the most relevant platforms for outdoor and adventure tourism promotion and marketing. It is one of the biggest platforms in that field. But what's very, very important, just because we're using this platform as an example, doesn't mean that you cannot transfer everything that you learn here onto any other platform as well. When we look at how we create text, how we create trail descriptions, how we write offers, how we create imagery, all of these skills are useful for any online platform that you're using. We're just using our directive as an example. So you'll be working with that over the next few weeks. We're going to keep this interactive. Um, and, uh, and, and you can try everything that you learn here in this online course out yourself. Um, in practice, you can actually create content. You can start promoting your business already if you have one, or you can just train your skills by, by uh, trying this out. Um, and um then you can you can decide whether when you keep working with this platform or whether you want to use other platforms as well in the future um in order to make this easier for you we actually um we're lucky enough to get a little bit of support from out directive and ti set so we are giving everybody who shows up to any of the online trainings um free access to out directive pro so you're going to get a voucher for that in in the email that follows this course so you're going to get this email tomorrow um, and uh, this helps you to basically also work offline with Outdoor Active and things like that, but we're going to look at that in more detail later. Um, at the end of each session, I am not going to give you any obligatory homework, but I'm going to give you some recommendations and things that you can try out at home yourself. It's going to be very easy this week, but starting from next week, there are actually going to be some, some tasks. Very important, this is completely voluntary, of course. You can decide whether you want to do this or not, but I heavily recommend that you make use of this opportunity to try out the skills that you learned in this course in practice um, for your own context, for your own business, or for your own partners, or whoever you're currently working with, or just for yourself if you're trying to learn these new skills. A few words on housekeeping and how we basically 
uh, implement these courses, how we interact during these meetings. Um, very important, it would be great if when you're signing on to uh, Microsoft Teams, when you sign into the course, you always get an, a link to the meeting before the session starts. So this week we send it out, I think on Monday evening, and then I send you a reminder yesterday, um, no, today actually. Um, then you, if you sign on to the meeting, please use your full name because we're trying to keep a participant list to see sort of like who has seen how many of the uh, of the sessions. If you cannot change your name right now, or if you use like an anonymous name, um, kindly put your name into the chat right now um, so that we can uh, we can later track sort of who has been here and who has not been here so we can keep a list of participation. What you might have already noticed is your microphone is muted because currently we have 160 people on this call yeah. and it would be crazy to basically let everyone speak up at the same time. It would just be massive chaos. So um, what we're going to do is if you have questions during the course, during the, 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 the session, you can either put them into the question and answer form that you can see at the top. There's like a little button with a, with a, button with a question mark and it says Q&A. Um, so you can you can use that one to post your question, or um, you can put it into the chat where you're putting where a lot of you are putting your full name right now. Thank you so much for doing that. That actually makes our work so much easier. Um, you can also put your questions into the chat if you have them, or um, if uh, during the discussion. So once we um, once we've seen the training modules and we're starting the just the question and answer session, you can also raise your hand. Um, you can see that at the top of your um, Teams app or in the browser, however you're joining this call, there is a little hand symbol and it says raise underneath. I can already see two of you raising their hand. We're going to get to them in just a second. Um, and then if I see you raising your hand during the um, during the Q&A session, then I can unmute your microphone for you. I can let you unmute yourself um, and then you can ask your question directly. Um, very, very important at the end of like after each session, there is going to be a recording. So we are recording the session, everything that's happening live, and we will upload a video of it to YouTube and then we will send you the link on the next day. So tomorrow afternoon, you're going to receive an email um, with some uh, instructions with some minutes and like a summary of today's session um, and a recording um, of the webinar so that you can re-watch it. Even if you can't show up to one of the sessions, you will still receive the email with the recording afterwards if you have signed up through the registration form so that you can watch it um, at your own pace. We do, of course, always recommend that you join live because um, it means that you uh, that you get the chance to ask questions and to interact and to discuss also um, what might have, yeah, not been clear. Um, something that we mentioned, and this might be very interesting to some of you, especially those who also want to make content or make content creation a bit more in, in, into their profession. Um, we do hand out a certificate if you want to at the end of this course. So if you've joined the six sessions for the entire course and you've completed the course, you can get an official certificate as a trained outdoor tourism content creator. In order to make sure that you actually did follow the course, we are going to um, give you a link to an exam after the last session. And uh, this is an, if you follow the sessions, this exam is going to be very easy for you because then you know everything that is in there. If you have not followed the session, it's going to be a bit more difficult. So it's basically a quiz. If you answer the questions, if you get uh, enough points, you don't have to get everything right, but a substantial amount of the questions you have to get right. Believe me, if you do join this course every week, you're going to have no trouble answering these questions. Then we will send you afterwards a certificate with your name on it that confirms that you have participated in this training and that you are now a trained outdoor tourism content creator. Um, if you want to, we are also going to compile a list afterwards that we're making public on our website. Um, of all the people who want to have their name on there, who have completed the course, who've gotten the certificate, um, and who are trained outdoor tourism content creators now. 
this can be very helpful for you because um, if you want to, and this is completely voluntary, so you will let us know in the quiz, in the in the exam, whether you want your name on that list or not, and you can always remove it afterwards, of course, but it's going to contain your email address as well, um, or another way to contact you so that somebody, if somebody needs a content creator for outdoor tourism, if a destination in the Western Balkan, for instance, says, okay, we're building a new website, we need someone to help us write the text, create the fit pictures and so on, they can contact you um, and, and, and book your service as that. Okay, um, are there any questions before we start on the content? I can see Luan has raised their hand. I am going to allow you to turn on your camera and your microphone. Luan, do you have a question? Or maybe put your question in, ah, there we go. There's yeah. no, hi. Uh, hi, hello, how are you? Hi. Nice to uh, nice to be part of this uh, of this uh, training. I hope that um, uh, we will have an uh, excellent uh, and uh, a good uh, training process throughout uh, uh, the following uh, weeks. And uh, I just wanted to uh, otherwise I come uh, Macedonia from Ohrid, uh, and this is a very important. Uh, uh, I think uh, uh, I, uh, this is a very important uh, training uh, for me uh, because um, it will be it will mean uh, that uh, we can I can learn how to create uh, a very a very uh, modern and contemporary contents uh, uh, from uh, every part of uh, from every part of Ohrid, uh, which will be very, uh, I think that uh, it will be very very uh, significant and uh, important. Um, that's why I uh, just wanted to uh, feel uh, to 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 to. Um, show my gratitude once again, especially this will be very important uh, for me as well, because uh, recently I started working in an online uh, touristic agency, uh, providing services for villas and um, for villas with, with pools worldwide. And uh, this will be, this will mean that uh, by receiving um, this kind of certification, I will be able to um, move uh, forward uh, in an extent to uh, make a, a greater uh, success uh, in Brilliant. my work. Uh, I would like to thank you once again and uh, uh, wish all the participants uh, the best of uh, luck in the training. Thank you so much, Vesna, for your feedback. Um, that's great to hear. I'm, I'm happy that, that you find this helpful. And um, I'm going to hand over to Fitim, who also might have a question. Fitim, you should be able to activate your camera and your microphone right now. Hello. Uh, I'm Fitim. Uh, hello to everybody. Uh, I just, I will be very short. I just have a question. I cannot write anything on the chat. So I'm opening. I cannot see anything and I cannot write. This is why I uh, raised my hand. Thank you. Okay, uh, brilliant, Fitim. Thank you for letting us know. Yeah, some of you might experience technical difficulties at time. Um, if that happens to you, please do not despair. We will not be able to fix everyone's problems right away. Um, if you really cannot follow a call for any reason, or if you can't leave anything in the chat, it's, it's not that big a problem. As I said, we will always send out the recording afterwards. And then worst case, you just watch the recording and then you ask your questions the week after when maybe the technical problems have, have solved themselves. You can join these calls through the mobile application or from a computer where you can either download the Teams app or you can, um, you can join through the browser. Okay, um, I'm just gonna check the chat one last time, but I don't see any urgent questions right now. So I would suggest that we dive into the first module of tonight's training, the first part of tonight's training, which is going to be a general introduction to the topic. I'm going to start the video in a second. Um, and if you have any questions during the uh, the video, just write them into the chat or if you have any comments um, or use the question and answer uh, uh, functionality, the question and answer tool. 
and um, otherwise we're going to have a conversation afterwards, uh, right after the video. Welcome to this training on the basics of content-based promotion in outdoor tourism. This chapter will help us gain insights into and a basic understanding of the values and opportunities of promoting travel destinations, especially in emerging regions, as well as individual tourism and offers through the magic of high quality platform content. In this chapter, we will look at traditional channels and ways of promoting tourism services and offers both online and offline. Look at the challenges that come with these traditional approaches and get a better understanding why they don't often seem to work anymore. Get an understanding of content-based promotion in tourism means and how it can help you to massively increase the visibility of a destination and individual tourism services and offers. Plus, we will look at good content and try to understand what makes content good or bad. Let's get started then. In tourism, marketing and promotion are crucial. With thousands of travel destinations competing for the same target groups worldwide, it is important to stand out and to attract those looking for a great experience. These days, people travel more than ever, so your potential target group is practically limitless. In many cases, however, the problem is that if you are based in a relatively unknown emerging tourism destination, travelers might not simply even be aware of your existence. Let's use an example to illustrate this. Meet Ari. Ari runs a small guest house and a tour guiding company in a rural and mountainous area. Ari knows the region like the back of her hand, and she enjoys receiving visitors from all over the world who want to experience the beautiful landscape, immerse themselves in the local culture, and do activities like hiking, mountain biking, or other fun adventures. A few thousand kilometers away sits Alex. Alex is a true adventurer, and he likes to travel. As someone who enjoys being active in nature, he is constantly on the lookout for new, exciting places he hasn't visited yet. So technically, Ari's region would be a perfect travel destination for Alex, right? The problem is, it's not unlikely that Alex has never even heard of Ari's home area, let alone to know that it's a great place to travel to. Because when Alex starts to research places he can travel to next, there are a number of different media that he can consult. Travel and outdoor magazines, online blogs, social media, destination websites, guidebooks and newspaper articles, or even films and nature documentaries. All of these are made by people, journalists, marketing agencies, professional bloggers and influencers, and so on. In a way, these content creators are gatekeepers who have a lot of influence on what someone like Alex sees or doesn't see, and what they write about, blog about, post about, or tell their followers about is very often determined by who pays them. And this is where it becomes problematic. Established outdoor and adventure destinations and their mighty destination management organizations, or DMOs, especially in rich countries, they have the resources to get their messages and their professional content into all of these channels. They invest millions and millions to make sure that everybody in their target group is aware of what their destination has to offer. If you run a tourism business like a hotel or guiding company in an established outdoor and adventure destination with a well-running DMO, you don't have to attract guests to come to your region. You just have to convince those that are coming anyway that they should book your services. If your business is located in an unknown emerging destination, maybe even a developing country like Ari, you do not have that luxury it is quite likely that there is no well-funded destination management organization that promotes your region. 
As a result, it is quite likely that travelers such as Alex, who would be a perfect fit for your offers, have no idea you or your destination even exist. Of course, you can start your own marketing, put your business on social media, maybe build a website. But with literally millions of companies competing for visibility online, how is someone like Alex supposed to stumble upon your business or your region by accident? The unfortunate truth is, traditional marketing channels bear very little opportunity for you to reach, inspire, and attract new visitors. And that is a problem. Because like Ari, you probably not only want to share the beauty of your region with guests from around the world, but you also need the money that comes with them. And that's not only you. A lot of small businesses depend on tourists visiting an emerging destination. So how do we break down this invisible wall between you and your target group? One very easy way to do that are online platforms. In particular, outdoor tourism platforms. Because in many ways, these function very differently from traditional online and offline communication channels. Let's take Outdoor Active as an example. Outdoor Active is an online platform that allows people to find, plan, and navigate all of their activities in nature. Hiking, cycling, mountain climbing, horse riding, even water sports like white water rafting or kayaking. Users can also track their activities while on the trail and even share them with the community afterwards by creating their own routes. And there is a lot of them. Currently, Outdoor Active has over 14 million registered users and over 60 million people visit the platform content every single month. And these users aren't just anybody. They are people who love to be active in nature who love to travel for that reason. People exactly like Alex. So what makes an outdoor tourism platform like Outdoor Active different from other communication channels? Is that they are, or at least partly, based on user-generated content. Everybody can contribute and share inspiration and information about the places with the community. The internal logic and the ranking mechanism of the content is based on algorithms rather than a marketing budget. You don't need to pay to get your content on the first page. It just needs to be good. At the same time, these platforms offer a very intuitive user experience. So people like to really interact with the content. And most importantly, all of the content is available through the same channels. It's not like a rich, well-established destination like Switzerland, which gets a prime spot on its own platform. Ours content, your content, content from your region will be visible to the same users as Switzerland's. So in a way, outdoor tourism platforms like Outdoor Active level the playing field on the international market. This means a local stakeholder like Ari or her friends at the regional DMO if there is one, can directly contribute content to the database. Hiking trails and cycling routes, points of interest in the destination, but also hotels, restaurants, local events, and even their own offers like guided tours. For someone like Alex, Ari's region used to be kind of a blank spot on the map. He didn't even consider it a place worth visiting. Now he can see at one glance that there are many reasons to visit awesome trails, beautiful sites, and attractions to explore, maybe a guided tour with Ari, and the kind of authentic local experiences he is looking for. Alex finds the adventures he is looking for because Ari has a channel through which she can directly reach him. The platform connects them rather than dividing them. And the good thing is, once Ari's content is published through the platform, there are multiple channels through which travelers will end up seeing them. For example, if you Google something like hiking in Bosnia, the first result that comes up on Google is a page of the Outdoor Active Travel Guide. This is a fully functional virtual travel guide that automatically showcases all of the content from any given region in the world, including Ari's, if that was his home region, of course. So naturally, you're gonna have a lot of reach with this. To sum this up, 
even with no budget and very little resources, you can make your destination and your tourism business a lot more visible among the relevant target groups simply by creating and sharing content from your region on online platforms. Because this is where the users are. This is where you can reach them and this is where you can inspire them. Here's a summary of what we just learned. Especially in an emerging outdoor tourism destination, it can be difficult to get travelers in your target market to notice you through the traditional marketing channels. Online platforms, especially outdoor tourism platforms, offer an easy and free of charge way to reach a large number of travelers. The only precondition is that you create and publish good content from your destination and or your business. Next, we're going to look at the different types of content that matter for outdoor tourism platforms. Depending on the platform, there are different types of content that you can create and publish to raise awareness about your destination, your business, and your offers. In this course, we will look at several online platforms. And in most cases, you can simply register a business or upload information about a place to visit, stay, or things to do, like on TripAdvisor or even Google itself. But as we focus on the target group of outdoor and adventure travelers, hikers, cyclists, backpackers, and so on, the best way to reach them are outdoor tourism platforms. And these platforms are built around experiences. Why experiences? Because this is what a traveler is ultimately looking for. Remember our adventure traveler Alex and the guest house owner slash tour guide Ari? If we want to get Alex to book a plane ticket, travel to a different country, make the way to a remote village so he will stay at Ari's guest house, it will not be enough to tell him that there's a nice guest house there. You can find great accommodations all over the world, huh? The reason why Alex travels is because he wants a unique, authentic experience, not just a good night's sleep. So if you want to attract someone like Alex to travel to your region, you have to feed them information about the things they like to do. And that is, at least in outdoor and adventure tourism, activities. The most popular activities in outdoor and adventure tourism are hiking and trekking. This can be anything from a short walk in the vicinity of a guest house to a full day hike, maybe including a mountain climb, all the way to multi-day trails in remote areas. It might seem odd, but millions of people travel every year just so they can walk from one place to another, for fun. For emerging destinations, hiking tourism is a great way to attract visitors. It is a low threshold activity they can be done by most people, even with little prior experience. It is usually very safe, and except for the paths and small roads that exist in most places anyways, very little infrastructure is needed. Some travelers like to go by themselves or in small groups without a guide. Others prefer to be guided by an experienced local who will make sure they stay on the right path, are safe, and will learn something about the local nature and the culture. Hikers who are up for a bigger challenge often look into mountaineering or mountain climbing. This usually involves more difficult and dangerous terrain, previous experience and a good orientation skills. An activity that is very popular among many travelers these days is cycling. This can mean road cycling, which is mostly done as a sport, long distance cycling, where travelers cycle on or off road for longer periods to explore an area from the saddle or mountain biking where cyclists ride up and down mountainous terrain on challenging paths. Also, there are several more niche activities that are popular with certain groups of travelers. Examples would be river rafting, canoeing, and kayaking on wild rivers, rock climbing, paragliding, and base jumping, trail running, horse riding, stand-up paddling, diving, and many more. There's one thing all of these activities have in common. You know, a traveler who's looking for these kinds of experiences during a trip requires a lot of information beforehand. If you want to attract hikers to visit a destination or a business, you need to make sure that they know what kind of hiking that they can do there. And this is true for all of the activities that we just mentioned. 
The rule of thumb is, a traveler is looking for experiences and activities first, and accommodation and other services second. This is why outdoor tourism platforms like Outdoor Active exist. Here, travelers can find inspiration and information about the activities they can do in a destination, plan their trip, and thus make the decision to visit a certain place or not. This kind of information comes in the form of content, and there are different types of content. Routes are basically trail descriptions, and they are the most important kind of content. Routes exist for any type of activity, hiking and mountain climbing, cycling and mountain biking, but also river rafting and even scenic driving roads. A route consists of a GPX track on a map, the details and information a traveler needs to know beforehand, and ideally some inspiring pictures. Points of interest, in short POIs, are certain points on the map that are interesting for a traveler. These can be hotels, guest houses, and restaurants, but also landscape features like a mountain summit, lookout point, resting area, parking lots, historical sites, or a beautiful lake. And of course, any other kind of tourism related business, like a tour guiding business, gear rental, souvenir shop, grocery store, cafe, winery, or agrotourism farm. When a user finds on the map both routes to perform their favorite activities and POIs to visit, this is a great way to promote local businesses. Someone like Alex might come for the hiking, but he will also eat in a local restaurant, buy fruit at a local store, stay at a local guest house, Ari's of course, and have a drink at a local coffee shop. This is why both route destinations and POIs are key to promoting what a destination has to offer. A POI usually contains a geo-reference, aka a location on the map, a description, maybe some details like opening hours and contact information, and ideally a number of pictures. The third type of content are offers and events. These are services that a traveler can book such as guided tours, group hikes, and other bookable experiences. In this context, an offer is a kind of service that can be booked at all times and where the operator agrees on a date and a time with the individual client. An event is an offer that happens at a certain time and place, a fixed departure. Offers and events are the type of content that allow a tour guide or tour operator to promote their services directly to the target group. An offer contains an inspiring description of the experience and itinerary, a location of where it takes place, some photos and contact details, or even a link to a booking website. To sum up what we just learned, the three most important types of content on outdoor tourism platforms are routes or trail descriptions, points of interest, and offers for guided activities. Next, we're going to look at indicators for quality content. Now that we know what types of content there are, let's look at what makes content good and what distinguishes high quality content from poorly performing content. To do so, we should always take the perspective of the traveler, the person that you want to address and attract with your content. In our case, let's stay with the example of Ari and Alex. If Ari wants to create the kind of content that will inspire Alex to travel to her region, she must understand Alex's motivation. When Alex plans a trip, he is not looking for an accommodation or a tour guide right away. First, he is looking for experiences and activities. So the first thing he's gonna look at when exploring Ari's region online are routes or trails for his preferred activities and maybe points of interest. Only then is he going to decide whether this is a destination he wants to travel to or not. So the first thing, what should good content do is to inspire. Good content gets a user hooked. It is intriguing, it is appealing, and it makes the user think, huh, this looks like the kind of adventure I want to do as an experience. Only then will a user like Alex start to actively interact with the content. 
click on it, explore the information that is there, and maybe save it to a list or download it for later. This is how Ari can convince someone like Alex to make a decision to travel to her destination. A route becomes all the more intriguing if it is linked to so-called points of interest, places a traveler would like to visit or that help them to enjoy their stay. If Alex finds not only hiking or cycling routes, but also a guest house to stay in, restaurants to eat in, and a beautiful waterfall to visit, it is going to convince him all the more that this is the destination he should visit. Once Alex is inspired to visit Ari's destination, next he will be looking for information. This is the other big quality of good content. It contains the details and information a traveler needs to order, to plan, to organize, and to actually do the trip. For routes, this means that there is correct information about the length and the difficulty of, say, a hike or a cycling route. A good description of the character of the activity and enough details to keep the traveler safe. For a point of interest, or in short, POI, it can depend on the kind of place, meaning opening hours, contact details, admission fees, or simple information of how to get there. So in summary, good content should do two things. Inspire and inform in this order. Inspiration first, information second. The first people usually look at are images. Images have the power to inspire us. They make us feel like we are already on the trail, that we are there. So it is important that any content you create, no matter if it is hiking or cycling route, a point of interest or an offer for a guided tour, comes with inspirational photos. They don't need to be professionally produced. Most smartphones nowadays take good enough pictures to give the user an idea of how stunning the region is that you want to promote. However, images are not only there for inspiration. They also give the user an impression of what they can expect in terms of terrain, difficulty, and the character of the tour. A POV shot of the trail, like in the picture on the right-hand side, gives the visitor an idea of the type of the trail. The mountain biking picture at the bottom shows a steep, muddy, single trail. A user will know right that this is a difficult trail that requires a certain level of technique to navigate. Usually it's best to have an inspirational, beautiful picture first, and then a selection of 5 to 10 pictures that are both inspiring and informational so that the user gets the whole picture, literally. Catchy titles are a great way of getting a user's attention. Remember, a user will usually look at a bunch of content for any given region. So if your title stands out, so does your route, POI or activity. If you create a hiking route, for example, and it is on an official marked trail, you should include the name of the trail. But why not add a little addendum? In the example of West Highland Way, Scotland's first long distance hiking trail. If you upload a hiking tour that leads to a certain summit, put the name of the mountain in the title and give a very short but appealing description of the terrain or route, like in the example at the top, over snowy slopes at Bistra Peak. Once you've inspired the user to click on your content, they will read the description next. An important note, this is not a turn-by-turn -turn description of the entire route. Instead, it should give the user a good idea of the character of the route, what they have to expect when attempting this tour. On Outdoor Active, we usually use two descriptions. One very short, one of just 180 characters maximum, that serves as an inspirational teaser, then a slightly longer text that inspires the user to choose this activity while also informing them about the specific requirements and potential challenges of the route. Note how in this example, the route is basically sold to the user almost like an advertisement. Exposed ridges, wild waterfalls, and gentle alpine pastures. Experience the whole diversity of the Nagelflukete Nature Park on a challenging mountain hike, which is followed by a longer text that again focuses on inspiring aspects like highlights and panoramic peaks, while also giving a lot of essential information like the ridge traverse that is partly secured by wire ropes, 
the option of taking the cable car or that it's essential to be sure-footed and have a head for heights. Again, you should lead with inspiration to grab the user's attention and continue with information to make sure the visitor knows what they must know. A great way to make your content more relatable is to add personal recommendations and hints. As any content you publish will appear under your name as the author. It makes the user feel like they get a personal recommendation from a friend or a nice person they meet on the trail. This could make the user more interested in the activity, as in the example at the top, where the author recommends joining the local kids at some fun in the snow. Or it is even a great way to draw attention to local businesses again, as in the second example where the author praises the cake, buttermilk and mountain cheese available at an alpine dairy along the trail. Of course, there is no one perfect way to make great outdoor tourism content. Tastes and expectations differ. But since you are the owner of your content, you create and publish through an online platform, you are free to try things out. So, what did we learn here? Good content should always have two major qualities. It inspires the traveler and keeps them well informed. In order to create great content, you should always look at it from the perspective of the user and give them the inspiration and information that they would find appealing. Good content has inspiring images, catchy titles, captivating descriptions, and a personal touch. In the next part of the course, we will look at how you can get started on Outdoor Active so that you will be soon ready to publish great content yourself. Content that will be seen by thousands of travelers. Okay. Welcome back. Um, I hope you all had a chance to watch the video, the module. And um, without further ado, I want to ask you if there are any questions. I didn't see any in the chat regarding the video, but this will be your chance. So either put them in the chat or raise your hand if there's anything you want to know more about or you want to discuss or if you have any other feedback. No questions so far. I'm just going to wait another 20, 30 seconds to give you a chance to ask your questions. Otherwise, we're going to continue with module number two and save the questions for the end. So, Francesca thinks everything is good until now. That's good to hear. I hope the video was quite clear. So there's a question regarding limitations or subscriptions on the other platform if you want to upload activity or business. Um, so basically, Outdirective, as most other outdoor tourism platforms, is free at a basic level, meaning you can register for free. Um, both, and this is kind of special about Outdirective. This is why also we're choosing to use this platform it, because you can register both yourself and a business for free. That's something that is uh, that costs money on some other platforms. In this case, it's free. Um, this is actually what we're going to look at at the second part of, of today's uh, course. So in the, in the next module, we're going to look at how to register on our directive because this is the platform we're going to be working with. There are subscription models on all of these platforms, but they usually require like they're for more advanced features. So for example, if you want to be able to use the app offline um, with offline maps and things like that, which is more interesting to the user, then they can get a subscription for that and pay for it. But for you as a content provider, this is completely free and there are no limitations. You can upload as many routes, as many images, as many points of interest as you like. At least that's the currently the situation. Okay, um, then we have a second question. Um, hello, so can you make hiking trails? I'll sell them as a tour guide on this platform. 
Well, yes, you yes and no. So you can you can upload your trail descriptions, you can upload your routes, and you can upload your offers. This is something we're going to look at in session number five: how to make places and offers seen, how you can turn a hiking trail into an offer that you can then make bookable. The only limitation is that platforms like Outdoor Active, Komoot, or, or Wikiloc or so on, they usually do not have their own booking interface. So all you can provide is basically a phone number or an email address or a link to another booking site. We're going to look at some platforms through which you can directly sell your services and make them bookable online in the last session and session six on April 10. Um, things like Airbnb experience or get your guide where you can basically make them bookable. But you can promote your offers for a guided tour on a hiking trail on a platform like Our Directive, and then provide a contact details there so that people can either WhatsApp you, call you, send you an email, or if you also have that offer on, let's say, Get Your Guide or VR Tour or Airbnb Experience, then you can add a booking link into the offer there. Um, so then we have a question in the Q&I section. Um, hi, is it possible to directly connect your existing website to the Outdirective platform or such direct contacts are not allowed, like on booking.com, for example? This is something that's probably very relevant to accommodations, but maybe also to tour guides and tour operators. So the question is, can you connect your website directly with content that you upload? Um, this is something we're also going to look at in um, the next session um, a little bit. There are ways to do that. First of all, um, if you register a business on our directive, um, your, your hotel or your tour guiding company or your consultancy, then you can, um, of course, link your website there. It is also possible to um, link your website in a tour description. So, for example, you can say, hey, the best place to stay. Uh, is this hotel uh, and then add a link to that website and then people can directly go to your website. It is also possible to do that for points of interest. So if you create a point of interest for a hotel that can also be linked to your website. And it is also possible theoretically to embed content from our directive on your own website. If you want to say, okay, I have an activity and I put it on our directive. I want to embed that on my website. However, this requires, I think, a pro plus subscription. So that costs a little bit of money. I will look into that. And uh, if you want, I can uh, let you know in the next session so I can research this and give you the exact details on how that is possible. Um, let's see if there are more questions in the chat. I hope that answers it. Um, here it says the website isn't restricted to only tourist attraction activities like hiking or canoeing, for example. So I'd like to put an art gallery in the website for people to see. Would that be permitted? So the question is, um, is it also possible to uh, add to a platform points of interest or offers that are not directly outdoor tourism related? The answer is yes, you can do that. Uh, you, there are basically no limitations because in the end, many people don't travel to just go hiking they also want to experience other things and uh, i think an art gallery for example is is a perfect example for for a point of interest that might be interesting to any kind of traveler so yes you can also upload to these kinds of platforms art galleries and you actually should because this makes a destination all the more interesting imagine someone like alex as we saw in the video uh travels to a region um let's say somewhere in Bosnia, um, a small village maybe, um, and there's like only hiking to do there um, and maybe a guest house that is nice and it's great, but he's probably interesting to learn more. And if there is a little art gallery, if there's a local artist who creates some, some sculptures or paints some pictures, that is brilliant and it should be there too. Or maybe there is a, you know, I don't know, a, a local fisherman who can teach him how to fish in the river. Brilliant, you know, things like that make a trip a lot more interesting, a lot more authentic. And it's a great way to promote such places um, through, through these platforms because people look for these kinds of experiences. Okay. I hope I was able to answer the questions. Um, I don't see any other, oh yeah, okay. What about YouTube? Um, can we add YouTube channels? Depends on what you want to do, but yes, you can even um, integrate YouTube videos into routes. So for example, if you say you you have made a video of a hiking trail in your destination, in your region, and you also publish that hiking trail on outdoor platform, you can directly embed the YouTube video into that content. And then whoever clicks on the, on the trail description can also watch the video um, as, as along pictures and so on so that they get a better better idea of, of what it's like. Actually a really, really great way to promote that. Also same, of course, for points of interest, you can embed a YouTube video there and, and say if you have a cool video of a guest house or of, uh, of the art gallery, you know, if you have a little video, how you walk through the art gallery, put it in the point of interest, 
brilliant um, way to make it more interesting for the um, for, for for the user. We are not going to look into video production in this course in detail because it is a little more complicated. But um, in the section on images, I will also link you some additional resources on how you can get started on creating better videos um, of a destination so that if you want to learn more about this, you will have some resources. OK, I would say let's move on to the second part of today's session, which is going to be a bit shorter. Don't worry, we're going to be able to finish on time. Um, and in this part, we're going to get very, very practical because in this first module, you, you learned a lot about sort of the foundations, the basics, why it matters to put good content on the internet and what distinguishes good content from bad content. Um, and as I said in the beginning, over the next couple of sessions, we are going to use the Outdoor Active platform as an example. It's a tool that you will be able to work with. So in the second module of today, I want to show you how you can actually register yourself and your business on the Outdoor Active platform. So this is very practical and I recommend that you, you listen to this now. We're also going to share the recording afterwards with some basic step for step uh, uh, instructions. So if you want to get started on the Outdoor Active platform so that you can try out everything that you learn in this course in practice directly, um, you can do so. have a good understanding of the power and opportunities of good content for promoting emerging outdoor tourism destinations, tourism services and products. And we do already have a rough idea of what makes good content. Over the next sessions of this course, you will learn everything you need to know to create great content that will be seen by a lot of travelers in your target group. To make sure that you get enough practice to summon the skills and knowledge that you need to become an expert outdoor tourism content creator, we will be looking at some practical examples and this course will guide you through the process step by step for creating stunning content. In this training, we will be using the platform Outdoor Active as one of the world's leading tourism platforms and applications. Outdoor Active has millions of active users worldwide and offers for all the technologies and possibilities that you need to generate more visibility for your destination and offers. However, everything that you learn about content creation here can be used for any other platform or even other digital marketing and promotion channels too. So in this chapter, we will show you how to get started on Outdoor Active, how you can register your business or organization, and get a first glimpse at the Outdoor Active Content Manager. Let's roll! By now you already got your first glimpse of the Outdoor Active platform and maybe you've used the mobile application on your phone. But for tourism businesses and organizations such as DMOs, protected areas, public bodies or associations and NGOs, there is a special kind of back-end platform called Outdoor Active My Business. Through My Business, you can create and manage your content, interact with the user community and get insights into the performance of your published content. To get your organization or your business onto the platform, the first step is to sign up for the so-called free business account. We will look at how this is done by watching our friend Ari sign up. First, Ari goes to this link that you can also find in the course description. She then clicks on Sign Up Now. First, Ari must select what kind of organization she represents. In Ari's case, both accommodation and guide would be correct, but she can only select one. I'd recommend going with what is the main line of your business, which in Ari's case would be the guest house, ergo accommodation. But whatever your organization does or offers, I'm sure you will find it in the list. Ari confirms her selection and continues by entering her personal details. This is Ari as a person, representing the organization. So she must enter her real name. Important note, if you already have an Outdoor Active account, you must use a different email address that has never been used for an Outdoor Active account before. Ari creates a password and continues. In the next step, 
she adds some details about her business. Here, she should use the name of the organization or company as it is officially registered. If your brand name is different, you can add that in the next step. Ari confirms that she is creating an account for an actual organization and moves on to the next step, where you can enter your brand name. If it is the same as your organization, just enter it again and click on continue. In the final step, Ari can check all the details she has entered. If everything is correct, one must confirm the terms and conditions and data processing to complete registration. In Ari's email inbox, she should now have a confirmation email to confirm her account. Please make sure to also check your spam folder in case the email doesn't show up within a few minutes. Once Ari has confirmed her email address, she can add some additional information about her interests, her preferred region, and etc. Now, Ari has full access to her personal outdoor active My Business. Also good to know, the account Ari just created also serves as a normal outdoor active account that she can use to log into the Outdoor Active user platform on her browser and the mobile application on her phone. Any activity recorded through your phone, for example, gets stored in your account and you can access it through Outdoor Active My Business 2. In summary, simply follow the link to create an Outdoor Active free business account. Enter your personal details first and then the details for your organization or your business and then confirm the email that you received. And then you're good to go. Now that you and your organization or business are registered on Outdoor Active, it is crucial that you add some more details about who you are and what you have to offer. Go to mybusiness.outdooractive.com. This is your dashboard. On the top left, you can access your individual user profile, representing you as a person. Right next to it is your organization profile. If you click on settings, you get to a number of tabs. Start by adding more details about your organization, like a website, phone number, social media profiles, and etc. Always make sure to save when you make changes so that they become permanent. Under the tab brand and design, you can adjust your brand name if needed and upload a logo. You should also write a short description about who you are and what you offer. Under location, you should place your business to the right spot on the map. This can be your office or the main shop that you operate out of, like a tourism information center and etc. I am faking this, so I'm just using the Statue of Liberty as my home address. Make sure to save again. Under the tab Media, you can add some pictures or even a YouTube video. These will show in your public outdoor active profile. You can always check your public profile by clicking on View on Outdoor Active. Finally, under the tab Status, you should change the status of your account to Published. From now on, users can find your organization on the platform. Now you can do basically the same steps for your individual profile too. Add some details, upload a profile picture, and a background image, and etc. The more details that you add to your organization and your own profile, the better. Think of this like a business card that you are handing out to every user who interacts with your content in the future. You want them to trust you and your local expertise. And if you run a business, you want them to book your services and offers. So it's really crucial that your profile shows that you are a legit organization, that you are trustworthy, and that you know what you're doing. Now that you and your business or organization are set up on Outdoor Active, let's explore the platform a little bit. If you go to OutdoorActive.com, there are several ways users can interact with the platform and the available content. Let's pretend we are Alex, the traveler looking for authentic experiences. 
The tab map offers Alex a virtual topographic map of the entire world. Through the search bar, he can find any country, region, or municipality. He can, for example, search for a country like Kosovo, for a municipality like Budva, or even for a mountain range like the Korab Mountains. If he zooms into any place on the map, a click on Show Content will reveal different routes, points of interest, bookable offers, or even a webcam in the area. A click on any of the interactive points and the content reveals all details Alex might need. If Alex wants to explore activities, he can do on his own. The tab Route Finder will help him discover all the routes that are available in a certain region. Of course, he can filter for his favorite activities, the duration and difficulty, and many other deciding factors. In the tab Route Planner, Alex can technically even plan his own activities. We will look at that in more detail in one of the next sessions. One of the most useful features is the Travel Guide, a fully functional virtual travel guide for any place in the entire world, as long as there is content on the platform. Let's say Alex wants to travel to, for example, the Western Balkans, but he wants to get inspired first. He can search for that region, Western Balkans, to get some impressions and inspirations, explore the activities, some special highlights, accommodations, and even guided tours. Of course, he can go on to explore any country in the region too, or from there, even any municipality, and so on. Of course, anything that you see here, you can also access through your mobile phone using the app Outdoor Active. If you haven't used Outdoor Active yet, it's fun to explore the platform a little bit and to try it out yourself so you can better understand how someone like Alex searches and finds inspiration and information for his travels. To contribute your content to the platform so it ends up in the travel guide and is seen by users like Alex, we use the Outdoor Active My Business backend for the professional users. You already know this form, setting up your profile. Now let's go explore it. Go to mybusiness.outdooractive.com and log into your new account. You will now see your My Business dashboard. This is where you can manage your organization profile and your own account. Also, this is where you can access the content manager. You can either find it here under my products or at the top where you see all the apps that are installed for you. The content manager is where you create, publish and manage all of your content, routes, points of interest, images, offers and so on. Once you have published something, you will also get some statistics about the reach of your content and contributions from the community such as ratings, comments, etc. Right now, Ari's account is still empty, and so is yours, probably. But this is something that we will change over the course of the next sessions, so stay tuned. Okay. That was the second module for today. We have about 10 minutes left and a big shout out to uh, the ski center of Brezovica, where I do know that you have amazing guest houses because I've actually been there. It's, it's a beautiful place as of the entire Western Balkans. So good to have you on. Um, okay, yeah, so this is basically a very hands-on int introduction to how you register your business on Outdoor Active. Um, very important here, you have both a registration then for your business and you have your individual user account that you can use um, all over the platform. I, as I said in the chat already, I am going to share um, the link with you in an email that you will receive tomorrow afternoon. Um, and it will also contain a very short step-by-step -step instruction how you can do this. I recommend that you try this out because over the next couple of sessions, we are going to uh, use our directive as an example um, to produce content. As I said, though, of course, all content that you create can also be used for other platforms. It's just that we want to use one tool as an example. Okay, with a few minutes left to spare, do you have any questions regarding the registration, the setup, and, and the business account? All clear? Okay.
just going to give you a second. Oh, there's a question in the Q&A section that I might have missed. Let me see. Yes, we have. Oh, there are quite a few questions I missed. I'm really sorry. Um, is it good practice for local government agencies to post points of interest like Monuments of Nature and our hiking trails at our directive? I would very much say so. So if you're a municipality and you have the capacities to do that, um, that's brilliant if you if you can contribute these, these kinds of places. Um, especially also um, because, I don't know, it depends. Um, some, some local communities, some local governments have destination management organizations or regional development agencies or other um, institutions that can take care of this. It can also be handed over to private sector. So I know of some municipalities where basically a bunch of hotels got together and said, hey, we are going to take over the destination management, the destination marketing for our village, for our town, for our municipality together. Um, but if that is not the case and you at the municipality, for example, have the capacities, you have the resources to um, to do some marketing for your destination, that is absolutely brilliant. And I do believe that uh, platforms like our directive are a great way to do that. Um, we had some questions earlier that I can also go through. Since we don't have any on the chat, I'm just going to go through them through the q and I think for the next sessions, I'm, I'm, we're just going to use the chat. That's better. Um, there was a question whether the content created by users is checked for authenticity. Um, I think that is a brilliant question. Is the content that users can upload to our directive checked for authenticity? Um, the answer is not directly because um, that would not be possible to do for humans. Um, there are some auto checks in place to make sure that it's no spam or not just like any you know automated advertisement from bots or anything that, as you find them all over the internet. However, um, basically what we do or what, what a platform like our directive does is that they say we um, want to ensure that local knowledge owners, local stakeholders upload the content. Because let's say if you're a tour guide from Brezovica or a hotel owner from Brezovica, then you are going to know best what is sort of happening in your destination. You're going to know that much better than any employee of, let's say, our directive or any other platform would know. I mean, they would have to travel to the region first and see for themselves, you know. Um, so for this reason, it actually makes sense that it's all of the content is afterwards connected to your account because then people can see, oh, this is a legitimate source. This is somebody who is from the region who knows it very well. Otherwise, you know, just your, I don't know, my uncle Bob could travel to Brezovica and, 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 and publish something. He can do that. But it's much better if the content comes from local sources. And on a platform like our directive, for example, content from local sources um, that are, you know, belong to an official account like a business account that you can set up um, automatically ranks higher. So a traveler like Alex is first going to see the content coming from the local sources. So it's not a hard verification or authentication whether the content is correct, but it basically makes sure that the content from local people, from local organizations is uh, seen first. Uh, then we have a question here. Can other users change content of POIs uploaded to our directive? The answer is no. Um, if you upload content, the content belongs to you. You are the, the content owner. You have the, the, the copyright of the content and only you can change it, delete it or update it. This also comes with a little bit of responsibility, of course. Let's say you upload um, a mountain hut and say this is you know, the point of interest, but then a week later an avalanche you know, comes down and, and, and the mountain hut doesn't exist anymore. Ideally, you should, of course, change the POI and either say it's currently closed for reconstruction or even delete it if it doesn't exist anymore. But other people cannot make changes to your content. It's your content. So we have some more questions in the chat. Are there any particular profile types in our directive for digital marketers, content creators, those without a specific business location or guide services? Um, I'd have to check again. I think uh, in the list of uh, if you sign up, there are um, there's something about publishers, and I think that would most uh, like that would apply most. A publisher can be like an influencer, it can be a, a blogger, it can be um, an editing house. So I think you could choose that, but you can also see what just choose whatever business type fits best to what you are doing. If you're a freelance content creator, I would just you know call yourself a, a, a publisher probably. Okay, um, then we have the question, what if you have only an activity as, at a specific destination, how it goes? If we publish it, it will appear in search together with other activities in that region or? Yeah, so basically platforms like this, they pool content from different sources. 
Um, so the question here to to some to, to wrap that up for you is basically is uh, the way I understand it. Hopefully, I understand it correctly. The question is, when I upload content, is, is it is it going to appear together with the content of other users, or is it just my content? On a platform like OutDirective, but also any other outdoor tourism platform, the idea is that the content is pooled from different sources. So if you upload content, let's say in your destination, and then you know your neighbor who also has a guest house also uploads some content and the tour guide who works there, all of your content is going to appear um, on the same platform in the same map. This is of course very good because it means that all of you only need to upload content once. There's no point in like if somebody else has already uploaded the same trail, you don't have to upload it again. But you can, of course, upload it again if you want to make it better or if you want to link it to your business or if you want to make a slight variation to it and say like, yeah, you can climb that, that peak, let's say, from that valley over there, but you can also do it from my guest house. So I'm just going to make a route description from my guest house to that summit um, that is that is done by me. But then it will, of course, appear together with the others. This is why it's so important to make the content good because um, we will look at that in a later session on content ranking. Um, the better your content is, the higher it will rank and, and it will be first seen by users rather than, than, than the other content. And then we have a very general question here, which is the best way to start your own tourism with not a lot of money? So this is something that we can fully cover here in the course, but I hear you, um, this is an important topic, especially if you're starting out as an entrepreneur in tourism. What I'm going to do to answer this question is I'm going to link you um, a few online resources that I know on how to get started and how to start a tourism business. Um, there are a few self-paced online courses available. Um, I'm going to share the link with you because um, this sort of goes beyond what we can we can teach in this course. This is really on marketing, not on starting the business. But as I said, I'm going to share these resources with you. It's going to be in the link in the email that you receive tomorrow. And then, um, yeah, I'm going. And then you can you can check those out too. Um, let's see if there are any other. I think that mostly covers it. We only have two minutes to spare. Um, I'm just going to show you real quick what we're going to do next week, and what your homework is going to be. Though you can probably already guess that. Um, so uh, a recommendation for a homework, as I said, this is completely voluntary, but I would recommend that you do register yourself and your organization or business, or if you're a freelancer, just yourself on OutDirective My Business. If you're a student and you haven't even registered a business or you're not a freelancer yet, pretend you are a freelancer and just register for yourself a business account so that you can try everything out. Um, and then you're basically, from now on, you're basically a freelance content creator because you just registered as a as a content creator, basically. So um, as I said, we will use our directive as a tool to try out all of the different contents that we're going to create over the next couple of sessions. Um, and as I also said, I'm gonna send you an email with all of the instructions and the links um, and you will receive that tomorrow. So a quick look forward to next week. Our next session is gonna take place next week, Wednesday at the same time at 6.30 in the evening. Um, and the topic here is going to be from the destination to the screen. So we're going to start with a broad introduction to hiking tourism, which is a very, very strong tourism segment and it's growing immensely. So it holds a lot of potential for you. Um, I'm going to introduce you to digital maps because they play a big role in tourism and outdoor tourism specifically. They're the foundation for everything that hikers, mountain climbers and cyclists do. So I'm gonna give you a quick introduction to that. And then we're going to look in detail into how we can digitize trails and how we can create trail descriptions. Again, in this next session, we're going to have a strong focus again on OutDirective because this is the platform that we're going to use for this. Um, the sessions after that, the sessions on uh, uh, text creation, image creation, things like that, they're going to be a bit more general um, and they're just going to once or twice mention OutDirective. Next week is going to be really on OutDirective, but then you're, you have your OutDirective covered and you can learn all of these other things. Um, also, we're going to start um, the, uh, the next session with a quick Q&A. So if you have any questions until then, any questions regarding the registration and so on, if you have any troubles, of course you can always email me, but also you can save these questions for next time and then we can answer them in the next live session. Um, okay, so there are a few more questions in the chat. Um, as we're running out of time, I'm just going to wrap up the session and um, I will try and answer them in the email. Um, also, if you have any more questions coming in so that we don't keep people too long. 
That's it for today. Thank you very much for joining this first session of the Outdoor Tourism Content Creator Training. Um, I very much look forward to seeing you all again next week. And if you have any questions on them, send me an email or save them until the next session. <laughs>